Okay, we're back here at El Paso County Raceway at Mike Hathaway's trade show. We're also here with Ryan Rockhold, and we want to talk about the new division that I believe is really going to take off, and that's these UTVs, side-by-sides, I call them, but what, uh, what's that actual classification of them? Uh, most, most people call them UTVs. They'll call them either amateur and pro UTV classes. Um, they are. They're just your essential side-by-side. You can come out and race in the amateur class. You can come out and race just about anything. I mean, we're going to allow the old rhinos, mules, just about everything on the amateur class. That'd be on the amateur side. So yeah. the people like out here, as we spoke of earlier, between here and Phillips County, we have, uh, what is that, seven, eight races, or what are two, four, six, yeah, so we're going to, seven, yep. seven, and then we're going to do the best of five, so you got two that are kind of a wild card, and or if you go to all of them, the points, you basically pull your best five out of seven, correct? Right. Correct, yeah. All right, so so that being said, both places, uh, somewhat rural areas, seems like all these farmers and ranchers or whatever, side by side, have almost become mandatory absolutely in a, in a way they, yeah, they the, all have them right so this is, this is kind of their their thing that you go and buy one of those you don't have to beat on your pickups anymore and going feeding cattle just checking cattle and things like that any hunter hunt, hunting people they they have them so um they're they're a dime a dozen out there now so why not enjoy them on the different aspects so basically any of those people can bring out their side-by-side utv mule whatever they yeah, want to call absolutely them, and then come race the amateur division and come have some fun right and yeah. then if they like it they say hey you know what what's it take to get a pro so what, what's the difference between an amateur and a pro so what I'm going to consider um, as a pro class if, is if you have any driver ability and, and you've you've kind of grasped the concept of racing then you need to be in the pro class uh, the amateur class is basically for somebody that just wants to come out and try it or you know kids as old as it's 10 years old or older I mean we should be able to allow them as long as they're racing with a parent um, I, the pro class, I, like I said, it, it, it's a turbo car. If you're racing a turbo, you're definitely in the pro class, mm-hmm. you're, and we're not going to allow turbos in the the non in the pro, amateur. Yeah, in the amateur class. Now, are there two types of pros that would be turbo non turbo? Yes and no. Um, they're they're allowing non turbo pro classes now, just for the 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 whole grand scheme of things. Is there there's too many out there. Mm-hmm. So if they're not gonna have 100 people in the pro class. Uh, if, so if, if we're having that problem, then a lot of people can go and get a non-turbo car and we'll split them up and we'll just call it you know, a pro-am and then yeah. and a, a pro-turbo class. And let's just say there's not enough to split up. Uh, I'm in a turbo, you're in a non-turbo because I'm not as good as driver as you are. Are you gonna be able to beat me in your non-turbo? Oh, absolutely. In, in this type of style of racing, it's gonna be more of a driver, driver ability. It's not going to be who has the most horsepower and who now, has the nicest absolutely things. because you're a better driver or just because you oh know. <laughs> no 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 I mean I'm I mean just, I'm just kidding yeah right so it, I really feel like this is going to be more of a driver ability deal um, we're we're going to put some technical stuff in there it's not just going to be a flat track everybody thinks everything on this is going to be just a flat track round and round deal no we we have the center um, rodeo arena we can play in we have the outside parking lot we're going to play in um, we're going to try to bring in some maybe concrete. Uh, culverts and stuff and do so what rock. we're doing out here and at phillips county would that be considered like a short course uh, y- yes is there a terminology for what you're running right I, I would think it's more i would think if anybody used to re- remember the old tough trucks yeah like that's we're, we're going to try to bring in some telephone poles and do yep. uh, um, a course yep. it's not just going to be a roundy round just exactly. going in a circle making a left turn we're, we're actually going to make it more of like a truck tuck uh I, I split tough it truck. Off. Yep. yeah tough truck competition type deal Nice, nice. Now, so, what's different between that and what you typically do at some of the other places? So is, the other it, ones are going to be uh, like an hour long. They're endurance racing. You really got to worry about uh, keeping your car together and stuff. Whereas this is going to be a short course, all all out, get it. Um, you will need to watch going through the you know the telephone poles and watch going over our uh, our obstacles. But it's really going to be a wide open driver ability who can get to the finish line first. So different from what you do at the other places which we were talking about i think what seems to be kind of cool i know why we race is for the fans and stuff like that right this will be a venue that you typically don't have like fans at because you're, you're out oh yeah because you'll be so, able to see the entire thing yeah that's and that's that's a big uh big deal for our sponsorships too i think yep. uh you're gonna have a lot more um 
eyes on you. Yep. You know, instead of just they see you come through the pits, they get to see you for about a mile, and then you're gone for the next hour. Yeah. You know, then you come back around, they see you again. Uh, this is going to be an all-out in your face. You get to see all the action. You know, rollovers, people running, running over each other. I mean, it's going to be in the pro class. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting event. Well, let's uh, let's do the famous guessing game. What's your prediction for how many amateurs from the beginning to the end to compared to the pro divisions? Are we talking five guys out there or 10 or so 15? I, I've got a, a, at least 10 right now for the pro side that have pretty much committed. Um, and I, three more just walked up and was, and was asking uh, if they could race pro in their non-turbo stuff. So, the, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that, like I said, it's, it's a – it's, we, could, we could probably easily have 10 in each. In soon. each, yeah. At our each. first show out should be at least 10 to 12 on the pro and, and if not more in the non-pro yep. because yeah, everybody sure. has a, a non-turbo car. Good. So, right. um, and on the other end of things, too, you know, you got a lot of these pro guys that are going to come out with just bukus of money in their car. We are going to have a pay out, payback system. Um, we're going to do $150 buy-in. We're going to do uh, 70% payback. 30% of that money is going to go to the – overall points we're going to pay one two and three um and then the overall points we're going to pay one two three so really the more people come your national points i mean your your overall points could be a, a couple thousand dollars in payout so nice. we, were, we were just talking about the ascs sprint cars that we have it's just kind of like our our main division that we're running out here and kind of like the old school way of racing was always racing for a point fund and the same thing with this, when you, when you have a little bit of a point fund, it gives them a reason to come back, to come to right. the next show, oh, or instead of just making five of those, they might make all seven. Right. So the, the point funds, I think, are big, and I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you guys are doing that with that right. as well. So, well, once again, here with Ryan Rockhold, and if you guys have any questions, you can get on our website, www.bst racing. Our schedule is on there. His contact info is on there. Make sure you give him a call because I'll be honest, I don't, I know absolutely nothing about these things. Uh, we'll be doing the promoting of them, but if you have any technical questions, uh, questions about the rules, uh, you know, something that I've been already getting calls about is safety things. So, what are some of the safety things that they're going to have to have in order to run? Because uh, that's probably my number one question. Right. Uh, so, the pro class, we we want at least four point. Uh, a helmet and some type of arm restraint. So either window net or arm restraints. Um, you, you can get the, the cheap window nets off of eBay that just buckle in, they Velcro and they snap in. They're I think they're 50 bucks a set. That's super cheap and that's, I mean, it's affordable for everybody. Um, on the amateur side of things, at least a helmet and seat belt and, uh, and, and a type of door. So even if it's the the stock um, net door, mm -hmm. it, it's fine because it's it's some type Something of restraint. Something to help them keep them yeah. in. Yeah. Speaking of which, hey, we're out here racing. Anything can happen. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they they do roll over at oh, times, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's probably not a bunch of contact. You guys aren't really in the contact sport like we're no. saying our stock cars. Right. Uh, I mean, it does so, happen. I mean, people but, turn down on top of turn. But, you know, tuck a tire. Yeah, any anything can yeah. happen. But for the most part, there's not a bunch of contact. But I'm right. sure there's probably some rollovers at oh, times. Right. That's probably the yeah. worst thing that can happen yeah uh, or an endo you know like if we if we build a little uh, jump or some type of whoop or something you something know. yeah you take can, it you quite can... fast enough right. and then, they, yep. then they do the endo deal yep that'd be me <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or you know you can overshoot it yeah you know, or, or actually that would probably be me <laughs> i'd probably be the dummy <laughs> yeah thinking, oh, just... i can clear it oh yeah <laughs> hey I, I've, I've been there i've overshot jumps by you know 40 foot just yeah because i thought yeah. i couldn't make it Out, so end up in the cornfield right <laughs> so all right right on ryan thanks for coming i'm really excited about this uh, i think it's going to be great and uh, I think it's going to build from here. Uh, we, we talk about 10. I, I bet you by the end of the season or the end of the year, I bet you we could double that. Right. So. I, I really hope so. Um, I'm, it's a huge following. You know, everybody goes out and trail rides and, yep. and stuff these days. And Colorado has some of the nicest trails to go see. And, and there's, there's one of these parked in every garage. Why bring exactly. it out and see where you, can, where you fit in. Exactly. Right on. All right. Thanks again. Yep. Thank All you. All right. We'll see you.